Hello and welcome to the PCM Tech Help Show. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain. And in this iCast, we're going to be talking about Windows 8. Windows 8. Now, I know there's a lot of back and forth people on this Windows 8 thing. And uh, people are asking, why so soon? Did I just hear voices? Why so soon, Microsoft? Why so soon? That is an excellent question. And I don't have a good answer for you, but I have conjecture. I have a theory. Now, this theory to me is backed up by some kind of evidence, <laughs> personal experience mostly, and I've worked with Microsoft software for a very long time, all the way back to uh, 3.1. So I've, I've worked with Windows software, I've seen the progression of their operating systems, and I'm kind of onto their little games for the most part. But again, it's just conjecture, so I don't want to offend anybody, and I might offend you, but if I do, I'm sorry, okay? This is just my thoughts, I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm going to be. I'm just, I'm hoping for that. So let's talk about Windows 8. And let's talk about Windows Vista. Okay, now when Windows Vista came out, it was supposed to be the new great thing, and it was. It had a lot of great things about it. The problem with Windows Vista is it didn't have a lot of great things about it. Does that make sense? It had a beautiful interface. It used the AeroGlass for the first time. But the problem was is it had a lot of really awesome features kind of just jam-packed on top of XP, okay? They didn't change any of the file system structuring. They didn't Fail it, change any of the indexing, they didn't change they didn't change any of the core operating system functions. All they did was they took Aeroglass essentially, was took Aeroglass, put it on top of XP, wrapped it up in a nice little bundle, threw Vista on it, and said, let's throw it out there, let's see who bites. Or no no no, even better, let's force it on. Okay? So the reason they did this was was completely logical. They made money turning Windows users into beta testers for the AeroGlass effects for Windows 7. Think about the progression of operating systems here for just a moment. You have Windows XP, then you did Windows Vista, then you had Windows 7. XP great, Vista a headache, but still stable like XP, because it was XP. 7 awesome, because it took the best of both Vista and XP and melded them together. And then added a whole bunch of new layers on top of that of great features. So what they did essentially was saying, okay, we need to perfect this Aero Glass system before we can actually push it into market as a successful operating system. So what they, they did is they released Vista, forced it down users' throats, used that feedback, and used that time while they were collecting revenue on that operating system. I don't want to make them off to be evil, but this is just this is just how they conducted the business, and I think they, they took a reputation hit for it because of Vista. And they took that time to do research and improve the AeroGlass effects, and they continued to engineer Windows 7 in the background. So then when we finally got Windows 7, we were tickled to death, because first of all, they did this. They said, okay, everybody's loving XP, so let's take them down a notch to Vista. They're marketing geniuses. Think about this. Let's take them down to Vista. Let's take them down a lot notch from this. Then when we release 7, everyone's going to be, yes, we're back to stability. Think about it. It all happened in that exact same progression. Yet another reason they dropped out the 64-bit version of Windows XP. Anybody notice that? I think, I think I was the only one who noticed that. But they said, okay, we need to get the 64-bit thing handled in the Vista environment. We need to perfect it for 7. And then everybody, by the time Vista has hit its tail end, they'll be like, yes, please, we want 7. Boom. 7 skyrocketed. So don't think for a second Microsoft doesn't know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. But now we're moving into Windows 8, and we're up here. So let's talk about the Microsoft cycle, shall we? What happens when we're up here and Microsoft releases a new operating system? They are releasing a new operating system to turn people into testing guinea pigs again. That's why I'm calling Windows 8 Vista 2.0. Yes, it has great features. Yes, it has a great new UI. Yes, it has a whole bunch of cool new bells and whistles. But it's going to do this from 7. If you try to get anybody on 7 to, to go to 8, it's going to be a nightmare, and it's also going to be a, a difficult transition, and it's going to be buggy, it's going to be uncomfortable, it's going to be frustrating, and it's their opportunity to move into the mobile market while making money off a new operating system, latest and greatest, shoving it down their throat, so that they can pr improve it for whatever they're planning on releasing next. Mark my word, it's coming. So that's kind of what I wanted to fill in here. Somebody had asked me about Windows 8, and I wanted to kind of give my thoughts on it. I, I, I've watched it closely progress, but it's not going to be a solid operating system. Stick with 7, okay? Don't, don't buy into the early adoption routine. Don't buy into the gimmicks. Don't buy into all that. Wait until they've had some time with it, at least a year. It's Microsoft, after all. And then see what they come with it. 
and see if they don't shove it down your throat. It's gonna be difficult for them to sell it, okay? Because seven's out, it's only been out for like two years. Wait, we might even be going on three now. But it's gonna be a very, very difficult sell because of the damage they cause with Vista. It's just too soon. So that's all there is to this video. That's my take on Windows 8 for now. Maybe they'll surprise me. I'm, I'm hoping they do. Maybe it'll be awesome. Maybe it'll be the greatest thing they've ever done. But I have a feeling I'm going to end up right about this one. So I hope none of you went out and made any kind of investment. Thankfully, there's no real investments to make. But don't get your hopes up. So that's all there is to this video. As always, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to leave comments or ratings. Remember, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+. Subscribe on YouTube, like this page on video on YouTube. Uh, you can follow my website, join the PCM Tech community. It's completely free. You can ask me questions there. Send me an email. Whatever you want to do, I'm here for you guys. So, thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next episode.